uh, and then they have, you know, they have kind of a rock solid, uh, kind of one, one thing fits all defense, a way to blitz from the same look and then, and then a way to attack you on third down, which is, is they're, they're, they're very, very good. No, not in our conference. There's there, there's nobody like them in our conference, and and you know there hasn't been too many people like them across the country. So there's not not a great a great comparison. No. What have you done? What have you done differently this week with your team to prepare them for the physicality they're going to see on the field? Um, we haven't done anything other than our normal practices. Obviously, we're trying to ramp up our, our scout teams on both sides of the ball. As far as we don't we don't have too many guys, you know, we don't have too many Shalit Calhouns, you know, walking around campus on on either side of the ball, and certainly not on our scout team. And so, trying to to represent their either their physicality up front on both sides of the ball is is difficult. You know, that that's hard for everybody across the country to simulate the the scout teams this time of year. Um, you know, in the off season, obviously, we did a, a, a big study on on these guys as well as anybody kind of knew that we play. Uh, and and then you know your game week, other than the urgency of it being uh, you know a, a a national game and all that stuff. It, it, it can't be too much different, you know. If it if it's if it's drastically different, everybody's looking around like, Wait, why do we need to do something different this week? But our guys know this is a you know a big uh, quote unquote big game, and and uh, we have nothing but respect for Michigan State. Are you doing anything different with your offensive linemen and telling them how they must stop the defense from penetrating so that you can open up your running game and not get yourself in those third and longs again? Well, uh, hopefully we're not doing that any week, and and you know, and I, obviously this is a it's a different challenge. They're, they're, the the schematics of their defense it's different than it's way different than our defense. It's it's much different than anybody we play in this conference from a just from a schematic standpoint how they how they align, and then again the the body type doing it is 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 also equally difficult to to replicate. But yeah, we're we're, we're trying not to be in third and long against anybody, and certainly not these guys. In the front here, I'm sorry, uh, Austin. Mark, what were your thoughts on, on Don's first game as defensive coordinator just in terms of you know, game day operation, communication on the headsets, all that kind of stuff? You yeah, the game day operation part of it was was good. You know, we were very limited in, in what we did. Uh, just tried to go out there and wanted, wanted them to, to, you know, communicate, play hard, get aligned, run and tackle. And for the most part, we were, we were pretty good at that. We didn't tackle great. Uh, part of that, again, was you know how we were aligned which was again a very base deal against against some some different looks that they gave us uh that'll obviously change throughout the throughout the season um but good overall you know and we've had a good week of uh training and preparation so far this week how does the um sort of in-game aspect of that how does the in-game aspect of that job change when there's more of the playbook maybe that is disposable, disposable for the how does it change or, yeah, I, don't, I don't understand. Is there maybe more to think about as a coordinator when you have a little more of the playbook? Or is it frustrating maybe as a coordinator when you don't have some aspect of the playbook? Yeah, that's one of those things. When you're in a first game like that and, and you know, when the game kind of gets away on both sides of the ball and in special teams, we're going to just kind of do our deal, so to speak. And when it's a guy that's never done it before and is doing it for the first time and it's not the perfect look that you're doing it against in, in any phase, that's not always going to be pretty. And so from that that standpoint some of those games you get late that those are the most frustrating when you're you're up by a bunch and you're you know you're mad at your third team whoever's execution because we want those guys to be perfect as well but uh yeah there'll be some there'll be some give and take and some change ups as far as 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 playing against Michigan State and, the, and their personnel groupings are again much different than than South Dakota and and you know there's a couple teams you know Stanford being one of them offensively to somewhat similar uh, but I think both at, at quarterback uh, the way Cook has played over the last several games uh, they've got a lot of skill on the perimeter and in the backfield there, there's you know some some weapons at, at, at his disposal but we'll definitely have to to be aware of and, and defend and um, I want to go to the uh, phones <coughs> hold on please uh, take questions for those who are on the uh, phone line again if you have a question please press star one on your telephone keypad. And our first question comes from Adam Graham Couch from the Lansing State Journal. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Well, good. I uh, yes. wanted to ask you a little bit about playing a team like Michigan State in sort of the similar mold offensively as, 
is Stanford, a, a program that's maybe given you guys as much fits as anybody over the last couple of years. What what have you learned from those games, and what's been kind of the secret? The, the, the outside perception is if you hit you guys in the mouth, that's the way to go, to run the ball and be physical. Well, certainly, you know, we, we lost to Stanford last year in a different in a different manner in which we lost to Stanford the previous year. Uh, and before that, we, you know, kind of had the upper hand. And, and if you look at our Stanford game, we lost in, in an execution style, you know, not literally in the John McKay execution style, but uh, we were out executed. Uh, and they milked the clock down and, and out executed us in, in, in just plain and simple against Arizona. You know, they were, they were fast and furious and, and, and out executed us there. We had a couple, uh, kind of needless and silly penalties, uh, a couple turnovers that really hurt us. Um, and so a totally different type of game. And, you know, I think that's the media's job, right? If, if one loss happens, it's, you know, we have to totally rebuild our program and, and it's just kind of that unfair situation to our guys, maybe to a certain extent that, that Stanford loses to Utah and it's just an aberration. If we lose to Stanford, we need, you know, we need to blow everything up and start over. And so we, we know that we're playing an outstanding team and, and, you know, they're, they're much different than Stanford equally skilled in, in a bunch of different ways, different in, in some, uh, but we have to, you know, it's the same fundamentals. you got to block and tackle, run, play with great leverage, adjust. Uh, there's going to be some highs and lows and, and, and keep playing. Our first next question comes line of Dennis Dodd from CBSSports.com. Hi, Mark. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Uh, I think you just answered this question, but, but how do you feel about this being portrayed as, you know, more than just a game? It's a clash of philosophies, you know, the blur versus Braun thing. It's a great storyline. Absolutely, it's a great storyline. It's great, again, great for the media and great for fans, and that's exactly what it, it should be. Uh, whoever... Whoever wins, whoever loses, uh, I think they're going to have to rebound exactly the same way. It's going to be, you know, a, a big distraction in some ways to, to, to some people, or it could, be, it could be a distraction to win or lose this game, uh, you know, going forward. But, but that's, that's exactly what it is. It's one game, uh, you know, there, I think, in the driver's seat, certainly in their conference. Uh, and losing this game, you know, I, I don't think we'll change that in any way. Um, and, and, you know, if, if that happens to us, we don't want to think that way, but we'll, we'll you know, rebound as well. Uh, and then nationally, absolutely, there'll be some, some hyperbole drawn out of it. Our next question comes from Anna Bob Waiters from Seattle Times. Mark, uh, when you say that they're schematically a lot different uh, defensively from what you see in the Pac-12, can you just give us a general sense as to, to what, what that amounts to? Well, yeah, I mean, their they're, they're base deal, they're a, a 4-3 defense, a 4-3 quarters defense that, that, that kind of, uh, you know, they, they, they basically self-adjust to every formation and then they have a pressure out of it. They really have one look. That's not fair. I mean, have, I, I think it's a huge compliment. Everybody thinks if you call somebody simple or basic, we're, we're called simple or basic all the time, and that's, that's kind of a compliment from, from our angle. Uh, they're really, really, really good at what they do. Uh, and there's nobody that lines up like that in our conference. And then they have a completely different deal when they want to either pressure you or, or get after you in, in some nickel fronts and some three down looks. Uh, and so from that standpoint, there's not anybody that, that really does that. The old uh, uh, Washington State Rose Bowl team was kind of probably the last team that lined up in a bunch of that, just just four three quarters. Uh, that great, there was a couple, you know, the like the Fiesta Bowl uh, Oregon State defense was a little bit like that, but you know the, these guys, these guys, they're really, really good at what they do. Our next question comes from Land of Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Hi, Mark. I was just wondering, hey, with with not, with nine conference games and a conference championship game, you guys take on a, a big non-conference game like this. Are are you good with that kind of thing, or is this uh, is it? more ambitious than other leagues and if so does that bother you is our athletic director sitting next to you right now or is that just an open <laughs> question no i think it, it you know it, we we love this kind of game i think it's a huge challenge These, this is a great program again i have a ton of respect for them and coach d'antonio uh it, you know if everybody else is playing an eight game conference schedule and four gimmies then we'd probably rather take play you know eastern michigan state union or somebody else but that that's you know we have a 
tough a tough conference schedule nine game conference schedule plus the championship and if you look at our schedule drawn out plus one other real non-conference opponent at least uh going forward and so we have you know we've uh certainly made our own bed and and you know we'll, we'll attack it our next question comes from the line of Seth Miller from ESPN.com. Mark, uh, with, with such a, 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 I guess, a headlining game and, and such a headlining player with Marcus Mariota, how do you make sure that he doesn't go out and try to press too much and do too much in this game? Um, well, yeah, I think, I think Marcus, you know, is a guy that puts a lot of, of pressure on himself. He's a, a tremendous teammate, a tremendous competitor and I think part of that part of that is how you game plan uh and and kind of put some stuff uh quote unquote on him that y you know it's just rock solid execution and you know he's maybe gonna gonna get hit in a in a good in a good way and get that that anxiety and that juice out of his system right off the bat and then part of it you know is is dictated by again what they do and they don't give you an inch and so you've got to you've got to use him to his strengths both mentally and, and physically as, as best as you possibly can. Our next question comes from the land of Mike Griffith from the New York Media Group. <laughs> yeah, that's close. Uh, hey, Coach, this is Mike Griffith from the MLive Media Group. I, I wanted to ask well, you if you could compare um, years. Michigan, Michigan State's defensive philosophy to what you saw when you were the coordinator against LSU and also if there's any – uh, trepidation about about running Marcus against a defense that's that's known for some of their hitting prowess. Um, I think they're similar to LSU athletically. You know, I think that the, again the scheme is 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 quite a bit different. Um, LSU was you know again kind of mixes their fronts a lot more, um, and and personnel a, a, a lot more. Uh, just a, kind of a different style of of zone blitz. And Michigan State doesn't just they don't they don't vary as much um you know i think they're equally if not more effective um and then uh second, what was it about marcus uh you know again marcus is a is a you know his his style he likes to improvise that you know that's that's part of his his you know one of his best strengths and so that's not something we're not going to rein him in too much in in situations that he will kind of realize it you know by 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 play call by scheme you can you can limit some of that stuff but those are also some of our our biggest strengths we have a follow-up question for the line of Dennis Dot from cbsports.com mark a general question um how do you go about, you know, recruiting guys when you know and they know that, you know, they're going to share time? You know, talk about skilled players, talking about, you know, receivers, tailbacks. How do you go about that, and, and when did that start? Well, that's a great question, and it's funny because, you know, at Oregon we used to scratch and claw to get in on one guy, and now people, you know, in our conference and across the country negatively recruit us that we have too many guys, and so that's kind of something that's difficult for us to comprehend. Um, but, you know, the way that we deploy the, the field, the, the ball could end up in, in any spot at any time, and so it could be, you know, it could be a couple games or it could be half a season before a guy kind of gets into a huge role as far as actually having the ball in his hands, how we practice, how we play. Uh, it's going to all add up at, at some point. And so we've got we've got room for everybody. And, you know, we've got, you know, like everybody, we've got recruiting bullet points that we try to hit in terms of uh, numbers and, and ideal numbers at every position. Uh, and, you know, we love to, to spread it out and get those guys the ball. Our next question comes from the line of Steve Summers from EDUC. Uh, Mark, when you look at the Michigan State roster, uh, are there any of those guys that you recruited? There, there are several guys, yeah, that we tried to recruit. And they're really good. That? I'm sorry? Who was that? Uh, I don't want to get into exact names, but there's a there's a bunch of guys on both sides of the ball that uh, we tried to recruit that are that are <laughs> really playing well for them. And once again, if you have a question or a comment, for starting the number one on your telephone keypad. And the next question comes from the line of Chris Solari from the Lansing State Journal. Mark, a lot has been made of, of your offense against Michigan State's defense. Talk a little bit about 
Michigan State's offense, which especially Connor Cook has been able to pass the ball with, with some pretty good regularity the past three games that they've played, what, what kind of things do you have to have your guys, especially your secondary, prepared for? Well, everything. And that's that's exactly what where they've created some, you know, created a, a, a beast in terms of the, you know, they've always been a physical team in terms of being able to run the ball. Obviously with Langford, with Hill, they've got multiple threats back there uh, and, you know, just pounding you in the, the traditional fashion. But now there's there's play action pass. I mean, if you looked at their their stats the other day in the first half, it looked like run and shoot stats. They had, you know, huge, huge passing numbers. Um, they've got big, fast, physical wideouts that, that, you know, when you get those guys singled up because of play action and the, and the, and the, the, the run looks that you have to respect, you know, that, that puts you in one-on-one matchups outside. And then, you know, they have a, a stockpile of really talented tight ends that, that you have to account for. You know, they haven't used those guys a ton, but um, whenever the play action game comes up, those guys can be a, a, a huge weapon. Let's take one more question from the callers, and I'm going to bring a uh, good chance for those who are here in person to ask some questions. Is there one more question right now? Yes, we have a follow-up question from the line of Mike Griffith from the NY Media Group. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, Coach, I was just going to ask you to break down Connor Cook a little bit more. Obviously, he was a guy that didn't start last year, uh, but kind of came on as the season progressed. You, you've coached some great ones. What do you think about Connor's attributes? Well, I don't like him very much because he's really good. That's that's my initial response. Uh, he's a, a tough guy, has a, a great great command of their their offense and what they ask him to do. Uh, tremendous arm strength, you know, uh, the kind of the the package of routes that they put together uh, in the play action game, the the single cut winner game. He he has thrown really well, the, like you said, especially towards the, the second half of last season. Uh, and then they, you know, they've got a, a series of play action stuff that that uh, he manages really well. Uh, and you know, they just they they they're very stingy in terms of turning the ball over. Uh, and and he's a perfect fit for for what they do. Okay, hold the questions on the phone, Anna. Are there any questions here, Jill? Coach, the nation is looking at this game as a statement game two top 10 teams at a conference, but what is the measuring stick you have for the Ducks in the game? What do you need to see as the coach? We need to prepare great and play hard and leave it all out there. You know, of, of we've, you know, we've had a couple games that we've won and we've had a couple games that we've lost where that wasn't necessarily the case. I think our preparation to this point has been really good, uh, you know, flipping toward a, 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 an opponent like this. Uh, and just going out and, and taking our best shot because that's, you know, that's what it's going to take. Uh, and if you do that, give every single thing you have, you get, you know, there's a call here, a bounce there, and, you know, that may, may end up deciding the game. You have no doubts about, you know, how you've represented yourself, your conference, or, or whatever other statement we're trying to make. I think we should have the other moderator, Dave, step in. And just... so if these guys are bringing a lot of pressure, like Greenwood has talked about, and some of the linemen have talked about, how important is the timing going to be for Mariota and the receivers get rid of the ball quickly and on time? And are you confident that this group is ready to step up that challenge, considering how green they are, rather than clean up? Yeah, that's a that's a big part of it, and and um, yeah, that's something that often goes overlooked in terms of when when you know. People analyze, okay, there were this many sacks or this many incompletions. It automatically goes on the quarterback and the offensive line. But the, the urgency of the route running, the, the, the cuts, the timing, the depth uh, are huge in a game like this. They, they do a great job. Again, they don't, they don't, there, there's no tells in, in terms of how, how, their, how their pressure looks are coming by design. You know, that's part of their deal of they, they just don't get in different looks. Um, and that's, that's, again, where both the quarterback's awareness, the O-line's initial recognition, and then getting the ball out on time are, are paramount. And how do you feel about your core being ready to do that? So far, they've been good. You know, so far, they've been good, but that's against the scout team. Uh, but just as far as, as, you know, the things I'm talking about, the, the, the depth, the timing, the anticipation of, of what could happen, uh, that's – it's 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 huge, um, and 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 again, can't really be overstated in terms of, of, you know, I know you're saying of just the the, the we haven't got a ton of reps with those guys, uh, but the the importance of that is huge. Mike, 
Coach, do you personally, do you like these kinds of marquee games where the, all the attention is on these teams? I love these kind of games. You know, I love them. Love them. If you're, you know, if you can't, if you can't get excited to prepare to play against these guys, you're in the wrong sport. Uh, you know, the, these guys are, these guys, this is, I love this, you know, I love Michigan State. I won't like them on Saturday at all, but I, I you know, I love everything about them. And it's a huge, huge challenge for our, for our program. Uh, and, and, you know, putting our guys in the best possible position is something that that, that's, that's a huge challenge and a lot of fun simultaneously. Questions here. And we're going back to the phones then. Uh, remember, if you have a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. We have no further questions. Excuse me, we do have a question from Lana of uh, Joel Rexroth from Detroit Free Press. Hey, Mark. I was talking to uh, Mike Bellotti yesterday, kind of going through the history of this offense. And I was just wondering, when you got there in 2009, um, did you change anything? Is it exactly the same, or is it markedly different now from what you inherited? And when you look at the history, I mean, talking to Mike, it sounds like, for the most part, that the, the offense is the same since 2005. But what have you changed, if anything? Well, I think we've, I think we've gotten quite a bit faster in terms of, of – um, you know how we how we how we run plays and the administration of of that, or or I should say at least we have the we have the ability to to go fast uh, and faster. We we tweaked some of the terminology. And we've changed we've changed the signals again this year because we're getting too many too too many outsiders with knowledge of of uh, what we've done and too many too many guys playing in the NFL that 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 have a lot of that information. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's been kind of a a meshing of, of several systems for a long time. And we're always trying to tweak it to get, you know, just a, a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, uh, or, or taking advantage of our personnel in that given year. Our next question comes from Lance Jake Faber from Doug.com. Hey, Mark, how important is getting out to a fast start for your offense against Michigan State? If we get out to a fast start, it's very important. If we don't get out to a fast start, we have to overcome it. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. But ideally, yeah, we'd, we'd love to get off to a great start and, and you know, maybe make them a little bit more one-dimensional, which they're probably not going to do unless it's, it's out of hand. But uh, we'd love to, to get off to a, to a great start. We have a question from Lana Fanny Stott from CBSSports.com. Mark, I apologize. The phone went out a little bit on that last question I asked about uh, sharing time. You mentioned something about negative recruiting. What, what form did that take? Uh, well, just of, of kind of what you were alluding to of um, not enough balls to go around kind of, kind of you know, talk. And we, we want guys that, that absolutely want to score a lot of touchdowns and love having the ball in their hands. But, you know, we, lo we love the guys that are just as excited for, for setting somebody else. Or, you know, you look at Keenan Lowe last week, he was about 70 yards away from the, from the back corner of the end zone, sprinted faster than anybody on the field to celebrate somebody else's touchdown. And, and those are the kind of guys that, that, that we love in our program. And, you know, a few other teams have, have used that against us of, of, you know, you're not going to be the focal point, the man, the guy, um, you know, and that's probably not necessarily a great, great fit for us. Our next question comes from a land of Chris Solari from the Lansing State Journal. Mark, I got kind of two quick questions personnel wise. One for, for you guys, what makes EFO such a, a, a good cornerback for you in, in your system and going up against top receivers? And two, on Michigan State side, how much difference are they without Max Bull in the middle on defense? Um, the, uh, the first part of that, Ifo. I think the two biggest qualities that that Ifo has go, going for him, uh, aside from you know his just his natural ability, is he's he's really smart and he's really tough. Uh, he loves to to practice. He loves to train. He's a great leader. Uh, he's a guy that that you know covers kicks and he's and he's jacked to cover kicks and return punts just like he is of, of going up against a, a, a premier wide out and so th those kind of things make him you know in that elite special and, and elite special type of, of class um, and then the last part of it you know and I mean no disrespect at all to to Bullock but their, their linebackers are 
outstanding, you know, and, and I, I'm not, I don't have a stopwatch on, on, uh, 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 Taiwan Jones, but he, he runs great. If not, you know, maybe even a little bit better, uh, the combination of, of those two guys, um, 43 and 34 Davis, right? Is it Davis and Davis and Jones? Those guys run really well. They played, you know, a little bit of inside and outside last year. And I, I haven't, I haven't seen much drop off, unfortunately, if any.